Sometimes when working on factoring problems, we might run into a fraction or a decimal in the question. And in this example, they threw in both. No problem, we can do this. Now, the easiest way to deal with this is try to eliminate the fractions and decimals. Just get them out of the way. For example, we know that we can bring a constant out to the front when we're factoring. Greatest common factor. So, if we're strategic, we can pull out a constant that removes our fractions and our decimals. Let's give this a try. First step, let's convert this decimal here into fraction form and then just deal with the fractions. So 1.5 is the same as, well, 15 over, well, there's one decimal place, so 10. Now let's see if we can pull one half out to the front and that would allow our first term to have a coefficient of one, which is nice. So one half out front, and let's think it through. One half times what gives us one half x squared? Well, just x squared, so that's easy. One half times what gives us our middle term of 15 over 10x? Well, we need the 15 on top, and then on the bottom, two times what gives us a 10? Well, it must be five on the bottom. All right. And for the last term, the constant, one half times what gives us one? Well, thinking if we had two over one, then the top and bottom would both be two. And two over two is just one. So yeah, a two would be perfect for here. And the result is no more fractions or decimals other than this one out the front. And we leave the one half out in the front. We don't want it to be part of the factoring, but we don't want to forget about it either, right? So let's just keep it out there as we go through the steps. Two numbers that multiply to two and add to three. Well, one and two would do it. So we're done.